Hi guys, good morning, good night. Thank you for choosing the Critical Hits podcast. Uh, I've got Jay here. He's really, really excited to be here, which is great because I'm not. Uh, and then we've got uh, Gia joining us this week. Uh, she played hooky last week because, you know, she had really important life things happening. So I didn't play hooky. Somebody decided to be extra late and then I just couldn't record anymore because the way my drugs are set up, I just get sleepy. If that ain't the oldest lady shit I heard, it's honest, but boy. <laughs> it's <laughs> it not like the crazy, we the, the crazy old lady shit you've heard. Gia said that, and my, my old man knees agreed with, with her. That's the part <laughs> that like, but not me, not up here. I'm still youthful in, in, in the brain, I think. I think. Maybe that's dementia. He's a you hope. There you go. I mean, we can hope for the best. Yeah, I don't know. How have you guys been? I, um, I have been getting into hobbies. I've got a surfboard now. So that starts up next week. I'm hoping you learn I don't how to drown. swim yet. Are you are you doing water wingies or what are we doing? See this that's the part that's like enraging me, right? So mm-hmm. I get this surfboard and I'm like, I've always wanted to surf because I used to be like a pretty goddamn good skateboarder. And like I'm still like I can do a couple things for somebody who never skates anymore. I just, you know, I'm not like into it. Also, I don't want to get hurt. Uh and then be like, damn. My my you know? old man knees. They only got but so much wear and tear they can handle right now. Well, because I'm kind of like big now. If I was like how I was before, like I'd be like, shit, sometimes you fall and hit the ground. But I'm big when I hit the ground now. Like that shit hurts, bro. Like, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like I'm stronger, but like I didn't get more HP. Like it didn't didn't work out that way. Oh, like, I, I'm, I'm a glass cannon is what I'm saying. Oh, so, damn. You spread your skill points wrong, man. You tripping. Oh, I, I don't. I didn't have a choice. It was random and I did not get the lottery. Yeah, you know, <laughs> I guess genetically. But um improvements were made in some areas so i I get this surfboard and i'm all excited and like for the record yes i can swim i have swam in the ocean multiple times um in my life but i get this and every person i've told just about has been like okay but like so what are you going to do about swimming and i'm like i can swim like well this is like swimming swimming i'm like i've swam in the ocean what other test is there that you want me to do like you know what i mean like obviously the test of surfing is different but like that's when you surf that's when you find out to be clear as well as fair, I never once said that to you. I just said, oh, look at you, getting a new hobby. I said most. You <laughs> are one saying. of the few that did not. Like Jay said it, and I like chuckled. I'm like, okay, it's like a black joke. My roommate said it, and I chuckled. Like, is it a black, black joke? They both were like, no. We want to know if you can like swim, swim. I'm like, guys, what is that? Don't put your fear of shit on me. How, how is me asking a question and putting fear of shit on you? I just said, hey, are you going to be good? Are you safe? I'm just making sure you're good, man. That's kind of what he said. And it's I'm looking at both of you and I'm like, I hey, think look, you guys think I'm going to drown. How about this? How about this? I got you know, a good doggy paddle. Hear me out. Muscular people tend to sink. And maybe that's what they're talking about. They're just saying you're really buff now and you you dense and you, you might just soak to the who's, bottom. <laughs> who's... <laughs> <laughs> I wore the wrong shirt today to say talk about this shit. Just well, go, go ahead and do one of these. Do one of these. You can I was see like, oh, it. Is that it? it? Yeah. Is this it? Just pop that out there. It doesn't look like much, but then I look at like if you look at my arm compared to my head, I was like, oh, oh, he brother. Said, okay. He said it makes sense. I was yeah. Like I look at it, I'm like, it's just an arm. It's not like a ton of definite. And then I like I put my head next to it. And I'm like, oh, I don't think that's just supposed to be as like maybe I got a little head. I don't know. Little head, big body. Yeah, you definitely you built like the Goombas from from the OG Mario. Don't stomp me out. (laughs) It's a Melgitude body. Is that what that is? You guys are hurting me. I already (laughs) suffered from body dysmorphia. I just took all the mirrors down in my house. I was like, it's fine. Everything's fine. I was just going along with your own joke, and now I was made to feel like a, a dick. So I guess here we are. Dude, monster. It's yeah, cool monster. when I do it. It's a problem when you do it. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'm just repeating TikToks. This is how you live as an adult without children. We watch a lot of TikToks. I do that with a child, so. I was, we're talking a lot of smack because that's what we do, and it's been a little bit. But um, no, today uh, Jay had some things that he wanted to bring to the table for the three of us to discuss and talk. And um, if you guys have been listening to the podcast, great, thank you. Please give us some feedback, hang out, you know, write on stuff, message us. We would love to talk. <laughs> right on and, stuff. Uh, if you're new here, I mean, please consider giving us a follow. Uh, essentially, the premise of the show is we are a bunch of gamers and we are fighting father time. <laughs> Uh, yes. I mean, well, like, you know, all jokes aside, it's really just kind of like adult gaming, you know, like it's gamers that are, you know, adults, like uh, families, you know, full time careers and, you know, things like that. And just trying to figure out, you know, how, how we sort of juggle with that. It kind of brings a side of gaming that we just haven't really 
talked about you know we get on and we're just like yeah so anyways you know final fantasy but we're not talking about like how difficult it was to find time to play that shit we're not talking Mm -hmm. about how i was able to squeeze in 20 minutes a week and it was the best 20 minutes of my life and i cry myself (laughs) to sleep every night because that's all the time that i have so like We're going to talk about that so you guys don't have to feel alone. And for those of you who are not experiencing it, just wait. It'll come. And for us, it'll come for you. It'll come for you. (laughs) You're going to put the difficulty to easy because it's the only way you can get through it fast enough. (laughs) Man, and it's just like you can't. If you're used to playing with headphones, you're going to have to keep one off because somebody's going to be calling for you. It might might be a baby. It might be some weird shit in the house going on. I don't know. I got a Sailor yeah. Moon Ouija board, so I keep that thing on me. I see Brand's already on that because he don't know how to listen to nobody when they call his name. So I'm just like, yeah, you're going to just keep one one off so you can hear me when I'm yelling you <laughs> from the living room. Totally unrelated before Jay gets into his topic. And the GM made me think of it. So my neighbor lives above me. Super cool dude, right? He's going to teach me how to surf. I've actually uh, done some computer work for him already, like, you know, pumping up his gaming PC. I'm like, bro, I got spare parts. Let's make it happen. So we're both adult children and we're working out a mechanism. Maybe you guys have heard of this where you take a can and a piece of string to another can on the porches (laughs) so we can have, you know, there's very little latency or lag. So that way we can game. Okay. All right. I'm pretty excited about it. Yeah, I saved him in my phone as my, my bunk bed neighbor because it's like we're bunk you may beds. may as well just go get, you know, uh, the freaking at the parks now, they have those little like tubes that look like the ends of like trumpets or trombones and you can yell from one end of the parking or oh, yeah, park, yeah, yeah. from one end of the park to the other. Just get those installed in your apartments. That way you don't have to fiddle with wires. I would, but I want to be able to turn it off. I mean, like, like he's he's got a whole girlfriend, bro. I'm not trying to hear something like, I wasn't, you know what I mean? My, yeah, my, right. my, virgin, you, my virgin ears. Yeah, I don't want right. to hear you nobody. Be, I, already I, I don't want to hear that. I'm like, I'm so alone. <laughs> <laughs> I, just, uh, like, I don't want to hear that shit. <laughs> Come on, man. You can just imagine. You can be like, well, tonight, my wife who pillow going to be making noises. The way I would like, Karen that whole situation of like, Excuse me. Hello, attention. This is your neighbor speaking. <laughs> God is watching. I don't right. know. I don't. I don't know. I don't know what you say. Something to kill the mood, though. Something. That was oh, a I, I just feel like if anything, if I hear anything, I'm like, what was that? Like, <laughs> it's, it's like, if, it, like, if it claps back, we're having a good time. <laughs> I hate you guys. <laughs> <laughs> like it is anyway. Not these <laughs> freaky ass goes. I'm like, hey, all right. I'm taking notes. It's the it's the rhythm for me. <laughs> this should sound like caterpillar. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. oh man. Oh oh geez. Oh. You missed this it. Is, you missed it, Gia. This is not a PG show. This so my not. bedtime's in like five minutes. I'm just kidding. Ah. <laughs> Will you be caterpillar? <laughs> Let me stop. Uh, <laughs> curl up in my seat real quick. She was like, I fell asleep. <laughs> <laughs> you motherfucker. Uh, so, yeah, Jay, what do you want to talk about? Let's let's get to it. Uh, we, well, we, we're getting off subject. You were talking about, you know, just all the stuff that everybody has to do. And I'm just wanted to get your guys' opinion and perspectives on avoiding burnout. Like, Tino, you probably got the most miscellaneous hobbies, you know, like me, myself. Um, you know, obviously the, the baby is a lot of time you know that's that's but it's great i love it sure. obviously but like you know with that and then my other little projects like i haven't really streamed which i will get back to at some point you know we'll we'll figure that out that's that's something else but like i think that's been, more of a willpower thing for you though not so much time because well, you know, like, like there's times we've had time like for sure and you're like not today <laughs> well and then i mean but you know do, do i have time you know and willpower is something that's finite you know it, it's it's a, a health bar that i need to work on you were talking about putting more skill points in your health bar but i just how, how do y'all do it man how do you do it because for me like you know i've been doing the the comic book thing for a little bit you know on on soul go online go ahead check it out Guys been doing great work with that. I, I'm not doing any artwork or anything, but I, I just couldn't imagine trying to 
just you know, you all seem to have it together, you know, and I do not. I, <laughs> I absolutely do not have it False. together. I'm just gonna throw that out there, dude. So I y'all just working. good? Y'all just good at faking it or what? No, not I at all. Even say that, that, but I'll let Gia start. So I was working two jobs uh, up until um, like I think May is when I resigned from the TSA, but I had like zero time to myself. Um, my off days at my full-time job are Thursday and Sunday. And my off days for the other job was Thursday and Friday. So I only had one full day off mm. a week. And then it got to a point where like on Sunday, which was technically my other day off. Um, and I was working part-time for the TSA. Um, I ended up getting forced on to mandatory overtime quite often. And then the only thing that kept me out of mandatory overtime during the other days of the week is that I had another job. And so I was able to like finagle my way out of it. So for a couple of months, because it was like November that I started working for the TSA, like literally for about six months, I was just drained. I was waking up at 2.30 in the morning, driving to work at 3.15 in the morning, going to work at the airport, then leaving there at 8.15 just to drive straight into work at my other job and not getting off there until 5 p.m. So getting home around 6.30 just to go back to sleep. And that was like right. five days of of my week. And then the days where I did have a little bit more time, it was still like hard to get myself to want to do anything. Cause I was just so burnt out. Right. So I was like forcing myself to play a video game here and there, but there was a long time where I just didn't play anything. I didn't make anything. And my whole, my biggest hobby is leather work. And I wasn't, I wasn't making anything because I was just, yeah. so and tired. I know that's a, that's the time like sink for sure. Like how long for, on average, like how long would it take for you to do a leather project, like from start to end? Oh, like days, multiple hours across days. Uh, like I made this hat mm -hmm. more recently. It was in April and I was working on it at work because the good thing about my full time job is that we can actually like make things so long as there's not customers or we don't have like um, like classes going on or we're not stocking or doing inventory. So I made a, a witch hat over the course of like four days and it was like working on it four hours, at least each one of the days, like the cutting, the dyeing, the cutting punch holes to, to stitch and the stitching. Um, so usually when I sit down to make stuff at home, I'll, I'll dedicate at least an hour to it. And I just didn't have that mm -hmm. time to do it. So it's not so much that like I seem to have my stuff together. Like after quitting the TSA, I have more time and I am able to more like get into <clears throat> stress relief activities to help with the feelings of burnout. But I went straight from like not working to having a severe depressive episode. So it's like, Damn. I don't know. <laughs> it seems like you, you recognize, you know, something that on paper sounded good because you know, the money's decent, but you know, you saw that it was wreaking havoc, you know, across, I think everything that kind of makes you who you are. Oh, absolutely. And, and, like you, and we you were made, going it was, on. To, it had to be a tough decision to not, but like, it was, I'm proud of you but, for recognizing that a lot of people don't. But some of it, it wasn't too hard to get out of it because we do these things called shift bids. And if you don't know what that is, is every six months, your shift changes. And they only had one that was like 6.30 PM to 10.30 PM. So me living where I live now, it would be an hour and a half commute over to the airport. So I'd be having to leave here at like uh, in the morning, not too bad because I would just be going to, to my full-time job. So leave here at like 7.30 to get there by nine o'clock. And then I wouldn't be getting home until midnight, 1 a.m. if I stayed there. And so I, I put in my resignation because they weren't trying to work with me to give me back the same shift that I had before, which I was willing to work through. Like, yeah, it would suck having to get up an hour earlier, but it was what it was. Um, and then it even got to the point now where I'm glad that I resigned when I did because so many people quit around the same time that I did that now they're doing overtime bids. So they're being forced yeah. to do three days of like three days of their work week of being overtime, one of which being one of their regular days off. I was like, nah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Hard, hard pass on that. But I mean, ultimately since alleviating some of that, you're, I mean, are you, I've, I've noticed that you've been on streaming some, the times are inconvenient for me to pop in, but I've seen that you've been on. Yeah. Like I was able to get on today cause it's a full day off. I don't have to worry about anything. I was on for four and a half hours playing some Elden Ring cause some new DLC came out and I was like, I need to get on that. Still haven't found where the DLC is because I forgot that the last time I played that game, I went to new game like plus plus. <laughs> and so I was starting back from the beginning. So I, I'm uh, like, I'm like running around all of the lands between trying to find where this <laughs> DLC stuff is, but I'll, I'll find it. I'll get, yeah, <laughs> exactly. 
not really? a good time. And yeah, Jay, I mean, for me, um, <clears throat> I don't know what the hell it looks like on the outside, you know, looking in. I, I don't know if it looks like I have it together. That's great. I love that for me. I'm so <laughs> far from having it together. Like I like let's talk streaming. I totally gave up on streaming schedules or trying to, you know, have my channel. And there was like a uh, grow my channel, I should say. Um, but there was definitely a period where I was just not enjoying streaming anymore. And a lot of it had to do with just like personal stuff, you know, like I would get on and I just wasn't enjoying it. And a lot of that is because I wasn't really enjoying like games again, personal things that I had going on in my life. I guess you could call it, you know, depression or something like that. And I think what ultimately ended up being the fix specifically for me in that is I started switching up the kinds of games that I play um, just to kind of, you know, add like a new like flavor to the mix. And that <clears throat> is kind of doing it for me to the point where like I'm finding myself not as much, but being able to play some of the games that I enjoy. Um, I also started looking at getting on streaming as sort of like a coping mechanism for some of the things that I have going on in my life. So like I have a really awesome community and um, they, they may be small, but they're strong. You know, like sometimes it's four people. Sometimes it's as high as maybe 12 to 16 people, which is lovely. And, um, you know, a lot of times getting on and just like, you know, having the jokes and, and talking and conversing will mm -hmm. take a day that was bad. Or if I was like really like, you know, in my head for whatever reason, like it kind of alleviates where I, I feel better afterwards. So instead of looking at streaming as like a chore, I started just trying to look at it as, you know, this like positive thing, like, the, like maybe like the same way when you're younger you're like i can't wait to get on and play blank game with the boys or the squad or whatever um you know even if i was the only one playing it's like but i can't wait to have that company because right. what, whatever that is whatever conversation we have is going to change my day so and it's funny because my mindset used to be like blanking statements just like how do i keep the chat going but now when they pop in i'm like no no really tell me about your day like let's get this going i i like with every fiber of my being want to know i don't care what it is tell me what you have happening and that like helped a lot for me. But as far as juggling like everything else, I mean, it's a combination of, um, you know, passion projects and just trying to keep myself busy. Um, you know, unlike you guys, you know, I'm not I'm not even in a relationship and I don't have kids or anything. And it's like a weird space. I think a lot of people will look at somebody, you know, like me that is doing OK in their career. And, you know, they're like, oh, man, you, you're you're probably living it up. And it's like, well, I mean, in ways, kind of, um, you know, but at the same time, there's like a lot of space, you know, where it's like, damn, what do I do you mm -hmm. know, with my time? Like, like irresponsibly, I could just be blowing money left and right and just on dumb shit. Um, but I don't, I don't want to do that, you know? So it's like, okay. And I don't want to sit and be like a total vegetable where I'm just like watching TV and I'm, you know, binging six hours or something a day. Like for what? Like, who's that doing it for? Um, it says nothing for nobody. So I just try to be productive. So, you know, I um, have cut recently kind of gotten back into music and I'm not like I'm dropping an album or, you know, whatever. No, but I'm Look, having... I don't remember those days, Tino. I remember. I remember <laughs> it, going younger, to your shows and me. all that. <laughs> but, but, but I'm having fun, like doing recordings and mixings and just enjoying the hobby for the love that I have for playing guitar or playing piano or, you know, whatever it might be and just making sounds and just and just sharing it to share it. I'm, I, I don't need a I'm not trying to get a following. I'm not trying to sell you nothing. I'm just like, hey, here's some shit I'm doing. And I had a lot of fun making it and I want to share it with you. Mm -hmm. Check it out or don't fuck it. You know, um, the video game that I'm working on, I'm still working on it, but I've definitely pulled back a little bit because it was kind of consuming me, you know, in a way where I was really just starting to detest the project. And it's like, OK, so work on it, but maybe don't spend two to three hours a day on it, maybe spend an hour, three days a week on it, you know? So mm -hmm. does that slow down progress? Sure. But I'm happier, yeah, you know, because yeah. and, what and, I, and, and the, at the end, you'll be able to tell, you know, like you'll be able to see it and be like, okay, it, if you were just crunching it, you'd be like, man, yeah, let I me mean, just do some stuff and just get, get it. I, I noticed my, like the, whatever creativity you want to call it that I have was just like, not, like blossoming anymore and it had everything to do with just how bitter i was about like how much work this is and how daunting it is and how i i, I need some time i want to do something else you know it's like i don't even necessarily need like people i thought i did but it's like no no no. i, I gotta just do some other shit you oh, know man. so for now it's like music or maybe I'm, I'm practicing fpf fps games i'm terrible but i'm like you know what one or two hours like it might seem like a waste on paper but if like that 
does something for me and like makes me feel happier and inspires me in some way when I come back to like working on the game, um, then I think it was worth it. You know, I don't want to make a game where like, yeah, this guy was fucking depressed and miserable when he was working on it. Like <laughs> that's going to show. And I don't, yeah, I put too much into this to, to want that to be the message, you know, and they're just like, I don't know about that Tino guy. So yeah, I mean, things, things have definitely gotten better. And I guess I'm just kind of like, whatever super strict restrictions that I've had on myself, I'm, I'm rolling that shit back and just like hopping around, you know, rotating as I'm having fun. Yeah. And, um, and I'm trying to participate in my own discord more because like, I had like nothing to say cause I was so stressed out. You know, I couldn't even be like, how's everybody's day going? Like it takes two seconds. And I'm like, I don't give a shit. I'm mad today. <laughs> and and I, I had to, I had to really fix that because that's just an ugly side of me. So, um, like I said, a little self-reflection, things are getting better. I don't think it's together, like as organized as I would like it to be. Mm -hmm. But I also think, and maybe, you know, Gia can attest and maybe you can too, because there's a lot of a lot of stuff you do, but it's really hard to like organize like art and inspiration, you know, like if it's, if if it's a really remedial task that you're just like, all right, like, like, you know, building a PC, like the basics, I'm like, okay, this goes here, that goes there and it's done. But when I'm like trying to think of inspiration for a quest and I'm trying to write, like, you got to be in the mood, you know, like that, like I may have that inspiration at the funkiest time. As I showed you guys earlier. Yes. I definitely understand all this, all this leather, just chilling, not being made into anything because I have not been motivated to, or inspired to make things. So definitely, definitely got it. I totally get it. Yeah. You got to, you know, that's the inspiration. It's it's art. It's kind of like a wave, you know, I'm going to be a surfer soon, you know, just be, just because you showed up don't mean you're gonna oh be riding God. motherfucking waves they're gonna they're gonna come through when they come through i know this i earn i own a surfboard are we gonna do this but, there's just gonna be like oh wave, wave this, puns is, now? this is this is girl just is wait till i hit the water it's gonna be like fact, those, you know, it's, there's gonna be those motivational posters where it's like the cat hanging and it's like believe but it's just <laughs> tino making fucking surf puns as a california transplant native from chicago <laughs> Somebody who recently got Agumon with waves on his arm and a new tattoo. I think I know a thing or two about this. I've dated a couple of girls that come from the islands. I feels like I grew up there. I've seen Moana twice. <laughs> what can I say except you're welcome? I am at a loss for words. Really ain't nothing to say, baby girl. It's cool. It's, it's fine. cool. Cool like but, the waves, like the riptides. <laughs> but yeah, I, I definitely brother like the, the brother. <laughs> but the, it's like gonna you get said, so much worse when some in the water. But go on. <laughs> just like you said, like kind of pulling back. I'm I'm a big fan of that. I will I will disappear from people. What? No <laughs> yes, way. I will do that. You do that? <laughs> That's crazy. What? Like, we'll tag you in group chats, text you, call you, hit up your significant other to see if you're around. And she's like, mm. I don't, I don't even know who that she's is. Like, I, she's like, I think I know the answer, but I don't know if I should say. I'm like, if you don't get his ass on the line, there's going to be problems. Problems for, for you, McCrae's. <laughs> <laughs> but, damn, yeah, man, I, I just... I don't know, man. It'd be tough. And, like, Gia, like you were saying, I was working two jobs for a little bit. So I definitely understand not then you got to come home. You got to make sure everybody's fed. You got to, you know, I got to cut the grass. I'll be cooked. I'm like, I'm yes. done. I you know what? Like, I'm cooked. One thing that's been working for me is I took maybe like a two week period where like I organized the shit out of everything that I have, like aggressively. I thoroughly deep cleaned. I threw out everything that I don't need, have or want. And, um, after that, like I've just been focusing on like the upkeep of that. So like I just I have a small schedule. These are things you can't let me schedule. let me stop you real quick. Once you get that child that you're so pining for and that family, <laughs> it, it means nothing. It your means your plans, your organization, and, and, and you're, gonna, stop. you're gonna you're gonna deep clean and deep organize and get everything perfect, and then you're gonna go to work, and then you're gonna come home, and your child's got everything back in disarray. I love that energy that you have for me, but let me stop you real quick. I can't even get a text back, okay? So I think that we're good. These are just hypotheticals. There's not a hypothetical. It's It's no different than Spider-Man bursting through my window right now. I I don't think he's coming. It's definitely more realistic than Spider-Man bursting through your window. And and, and I'm not out here like that. I'm not in the streets, okay? Nobody... Yeah, right. That, you, that, look, you're going to be on the waves, though. You're going to be on the waves in a second. So that's, you know, who knows? Picking up all the how wave babes. You, how, you guys are going to just use my own words against me? You mother. <laughs> I'm just saying. 
what a terrible time. But what I was saying is like, I heard those wetsuits fit real good. Bro, I'm about to be out here bare ass. Please don't. Hey, look, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna lie. I'm not gonna lie. (laughs) So cold. Look, I'm not gonna lie. Y'all not gonna know. The Pacific is cold. (laughs) (laughs) Y'all not gonna know because I'm not standing up, but I'm ass out at this moment. Oh. If I stood up, it'd be a black bar. It's hot. What's that from uh, Rugrats uh, that Tommy Pickles was saying? He was like, Nike is free. Nike is good. <laughs> yeah, that you got that nice. energy right now? Yeah, I, that's, I, I'm, I'm, let, that I'm, letting, I'm letting the boys breathe right now. Let me tell you, because it's been rough. There's really no other way to be. You know what? <laughs> same same over here, bro. I wasn't going to say nothing. <laughs> we were just, we were just out here. At least I'm the only decent one on the podcast, I guess. No, nah, I'm kidding. I do got like hoochie daddy shorts on though. I'm, I'll be honest. It was very my, hot today. I, my like, shorts I, are hoochier. All right, don't don't worry about it. There's no shorts, or, no file, file, file not found. Yeah, there we go, <laughs> there we go. But uh, oh, gee, Jesus Christ, the only thing I was trying to say though is that, um, so for me, things you can organize, you know, that like often mess me up because my ADHD ass, I'd be all over the place. So having everything really like tight and right. And, and organized, it's so much easier for me to like keep up with lightly and have a schedule through the week. So it's like, okay, so honestly, it's probably the most organized I've ever been. You know, it's like Tuesday hits. I'm like, okay, Tuesday means I'm going to spend an hour. I'm going to rip apart the bathroom, thoroughly scrub it. Cause like before it'd be like the wild west. I'd wait, I'd have to wait to be like, Ugh, it's kind of gross in here, you know, right. not no more. <laughs> Ain't no germs in that bad boy. It's spotless. Um, but, but just like everything, like every little thing that I have is just like stupid organized now where it's, it kind of freaks me out sometimes. I'm like, who is this guy? But, um, that, that has helped a lot because that way, when I have these random urges for like art or inspiration to do something, it's like, you know what I mean? Like, I don't have to sacrifice something else to make it happen. I'm like, okay, I already did this. I took care of this. So I have all this ample time to do what I want to do the way that I want to do it. Um, whereas before I would just be like, I don't know. I kind of felt like uh, Back to the Future, like the, the fucking doc from that, where his hair is all fucking crazy. And he's like, Marty. And he's just, you know, that <laughs> felt like me. I'm like, I have an idea. And I just, you know, everything would be a fucking mess. That's how my life felt all the time. And now it's like, I have an idea, but this place is clean. So it's cool. All right. It's okay. I'm, tr- I'm trying. I'm trying to adult better. Every day we get a little better, supposedly. So yeah, well, so did, was there anything else that you wanted to add to that before we kind of jump into our next thing? No, I mean, you know, I guess there is no secret that no, you know, one size fits all type deal. You know, you I say guess, that you uh, organize stuff, but we just look like we're very well put together adults, you know. That's all I understood from Jay. Yeah, I want to be like y'all when I grow up. I don't even know that we do. I think That's- it's just because Jay doesn't like internet a lot, you know. Oh, the no. semblance, that, dude! That I was it. I was wilding out on TikTok for a little while because I was so depressed. Just all the sad videos, bro. You missed it. Good job. Ma'am. All right, look, hey. I don't know how you do. It, it can't be me. Like you know what I mean. The second I get that somebody checking in on me, I'm like, what makes you think it's okay to check on me? Like we posted a video. I'm like, I shouldn't have did that. Not nah, mad at me. <laughs> dude, the first time I heard from Stephen in months. You okay over there? I've been seeing these sad ass videos you're posting. Yeah, I'm good. Leave me alone. Just let me nah, post my I, sad videos. <laughs> right, I'm great. Which I'm I mean, I, I'm, just, I'm not here to hate on nobody. You, you, whatever way work like venting works for you. Like you know, like do what you got to do. Like yeah, me, I, do a little I bit can't of venting do that. And then I delete it. But I, <laughs> I remember that. I used to do that. But like now, I'll I'll pick a couple people and I'll fucking bother them. And you guys are two of the couple people. I'll be like, shit, you about to get an hour long phone call. I got some shit to get off my chest. <laughs> and like, thank you for taking you know that that L because like it helps so much sometimes. No. But just to be clear, it's a two way street. If you got to give me a phone, nobody ever does. But if you need to, I'll make some time. I heard from somebody that he doesn't like unsolicited phone calls. So. You guys get special passes though. Like worst case, I would just not answer it and text you back and make some time for it. Okay. All right. You you heard it here first, folks. Yeah. If you're like Steven, I mean, even him, I would make some time for, but I, well, you know what? When, if Steven's ever said, can he get sad? I think he's too dumb to be sad. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like when you're, when your level of ignorance is so high, like you don't know that you don't got it good. Like a, like a Walmart cashier. That's like, I worked this job for 20 years and it could never be better than this. And I was like, well, I love that for you. I love, I love, you know, Sure. Congrats, man. Hey, yeah, look, you, different mm-hmm. strokes for different folks. They gave me 15 cents a year, and based on what I know about inflation, I am killing the game. <laughs> and I'm like, oh. That definitely oh. sounds like Stephen. Are you just copying his words right now? No, it's all, it's, it doesn't take a lot to mimic. 
somebody. Uh, you know what? We'll just let it go. So let's, I think right, okay. anybody right. listening, I think, would get it. You know? <laughs> you said you understand. If you've been here before, you get it. Yeah, the guy with an imaginary rule book for drinking rules or whatever the fuck he was talking about. Oh, yeah, and his, his whole podcast. thing where he doesn't drink water. I, I didn't listen to it, I'm be honest. Oh, the, it, it, it was rough. <laughs> like, like, at one point, just really, really fast to reiterate, he was like, yeah, so if somebody, if you buy a drink for somebody, so say he bought a drink for me, and I turned it down, that would be incredibly problematic because there's rules. And I was like, what fucking rules? I was like, if I am at my limit and you didn't ask me if I wanted to drink first, I while I may very much appreciate the gesture, I'm not about to risk my life or you know whatever the fuck because you decided to buy me a drink. Like, I guess you wasted some money. Is there somebody else in the bar? And he just couldn't comprehend that. Like it just like it wouldn't ride for him. He's like, no. You can't do that. That's not what a man does. I'm like, well, now it sounds sexist. Like, what the fuck? Like, <laughs> if you buy a drink and I don't want it, why am I the bad guy? It was it was a whole thing. And we did that show live and it was just like, people were like, yo, is this guy for real? And I'm like, Steven, stop it. He likes to double down when he gets told that he's yeah. wrong about something. Yeah, yeah. No, he's a big fan of the double down. No, you never so, turn like, down a round of shots that someone bought you with their hard earned money. You have to accept it. Do I sound like, like Steven yeah. right now? basically i'm like dude that's so sus i'm like there's no rules i'm like that's like some weird toxic shit you grew up with i'm like i don't know bro you grew up without a father you were just making shit up at this point like i don't i don't understand where you got this from it's probably some shitty warehouse worker that you work with i don't know it's bad it's not good so i was just being really clear on the show like if you don't want to take some shit from somebody you don't have to it's okay (laughs) it's or you must because it's a rule so yeah no Absolutely not. Um, so anyways, uh, things that we wanted to transition to and talk about. Um, I don't know how like I would word it exactly, but I think that there's a phase that we go through where as kids, or at least for me, I had absolutely no money. So we would rent games often um, and maybe once or twice a year, like Christmas and a birthday, we might get a game. Um, but it was like really tough to like be a gamer growing up in a poor household. And then we get money. And at first, you know, you get a job, so you're getting money and you may, most of us didn't have too many responsibilities yet. So, I mean, you could make those bad decisions and get all the things that you want, but like, then, you know, you move forward and you're like, I'm going to keep getting more money. And you kind of don't, and (laughs) there's more responsibilities. So, you know, I, I guess it would be kind of fun to talk about how we mitigate, you know, some of the decisions that we make financially when it comes to getting games and stuff. Cause I mean, like the truth is, your everyday worker, you know, with a family or somebody who has some kind of actual responsibility to them is not fucking off all their money on games. But when you do, why do you do it? And if you don't, like, how do you, you know, what do you get into that has low cost, um, you know, that, you know, gives you that feel of having a new game when you want a new game, but you ain't got new game money or, you know, are the kind of person that's like, all right, I waited four years for this to go from $70 to to fifteen dollars, you know, like what? Well, like, right. There's no wrong answer, or you know what? I'm addicted to indie games now because on average they cost you know a fifth of the you know price of AAA games. Um, so yeah, I mean, Jay, maybe start with you and then work to Gia. I'll, I can go last. All right, cool. So just to just, I'm gonna give a little background. You were talking about growing up, obviously not being able to get every game that you wanted when you know the second it came out, when you wanted it, it's just like hey, if it happens, awesome. I was pretty fortunate with the fact that my dad was close to someone who owned a video store. So, and not like a big store, just like the local spot. And whenever games would get too old, he would sell them to my dad at a discount. So I had like, once it got to the Nintendo 64 age, I had gangs of games. You know what I mean? Like I had a whole little shelf, you know, and I was, I was loving it. I was living the dream. And uh, and the way it kind of spoiled me, but then at the same time, I don't have a issue waiting for a game. It may not be four years. It, it may be four years, you know, but I won't say, all right, well, it has to get down to 15 bucks for me to play it. But I will not rush out to go get a game just because I'm excited for it because I've been let down <laughs> plenty of times. It like I feel like the the hype of the game is such a big part of just the, the between the marketing and then just the people, the masses, your friends, they all get you hyped up and then they come on, man, we all going to be on it. And then we get the game and we play it for 20 minutes together and we can never line up again. 
and then I don't want to play it anymore. I don't want to play it by myself. But like the most recent thing I would say is probably be Hell Divers Two, right? It, it, that was the new hotness. Only forty bucks, right? The the base game is forty dollars. I bought it. I enjoyed it. When I'm playing with people, I'm not going to play it by myself. I haven't played it. It's probably been a couple months now, and it's just like, ooh, that like I mean, you know, it didn't hurt because it wasn't seventy bucks. If it was seventy bucks, I'd be like, hey, who told me to buy this? Get on. No, I, and I think Get one on thing right now important to highlight that Jay said is um, your friends. There are some friends that are just really fucking toxic and ignorant of like your situation or whatever. So I'm going to, I'm going to throw a name out there. Let's just say I know somebody, Steven, right? And Steven thinks that every game he finds is gold and will try so hard to like, you know, silver tongue you into getting this game that like you don't need it's like bro i don't have time to play it i'm not interested in it you haven't even played it yet but perhaps the most important thing about all of this is he's the kind of person that you will make that sacrifice and then if you find a game that you want to play won't just won't i'm not i'm not gonna play that shit i'm not doing that shit wait wait. (laughs) so i'm not that's that ain't me bro and i'm just like hmm so just like be careful of people like that that will kind of like bully you into that sort of stuff you know i Mm -hmm. I think there's a really big difference you know like when you organically and authentically see something that you have interest in um you know go for that when you're ready and you know to pull that trigger whatever um and of course it could be super helpful if you have friends like hey i really enjoyed this thing you know you should check it out like like don't like you know close them off completely but don't let your friends bully you into some shit that you not you shouldn't be doing right here and that. You know what I mean? Don't make bad right. decisions because like oh. I got to get with the squad. Like, mm, and on the flip they side too, a, the week. we have a we have another group of friends too that we often have this problem with. We're like, they'll buy a Worst game the ever. second it comes out, <laughs> and like I can't afford to buy it when it first comes out. Sometimes, so I have to wait a couple weeks, and then I always ask, "Are we still going to be playing this in a couple weeks when I can afford it? Because I'm not going to buy it if you guys are off it already." And like clockwork, they'll buy it, they'll play it for like five, six days straight, and then they won't touch it again. So that's honestly saved yeah, me a because, bunch of money in the long term because now I don't have to buy it because I know there ain't nobody I'm going to be playing with. Not one person I know right. is still going to be playing it. Yeah, and, and it's because, you know, the next game is already out. We already on to the next the next big thing, all right? It's like, all right, is whatever that was, that's old news. New game out, we got to get this. Well, yeah, so a lot of them will buy games just like irresponsibly you know so it's not like the point isn't even whether or not you can I mean, afford well, you it. know some people some people don't buy surfboards you know some people just these are their surfboards all right some people can make a raft out of their game cases and, and that's what they're going to use you know i mean that's okay. good and fine though I mean, and everything I, but then don't i paint like- with all the colors of the wind jay so <laughs> let me just say you know fuck you for trying to come at me you know I was just going to say that I understand and I get it and power to them that they can afford it right away. Like, good. Awesome. Like, do you, but also don't like pressure. Cause that that's my side of the thing is like, I can't always afford the games when they first come out. And a lot of times, like with the new system, like PlayStation five, I didn't buy that when it first came out. Not that really I could have because they were all sold out, but I like to wait until there's at least like four or five games that I want to play on a system before I'll buy it. So mm-hmm. all these games are coming out. I'm hearing and seeing about Final Fantasy 16. I'm hearing and seeing about like, you know, how good Final Fantasy 7 Remake looks on the PlayStation 5. And I don't have one yet because I have that hard limit set for myself. Mainly because unless there's that many games, I feel like it's a waste of money to spend 500 bucks on a new system um, oh, that I want to play. And then two, like I'd get bored with it. And now I'm having a basically a glorified paperweight that's not being used. So, but then on the flip side too, like I, yeah, yeah, it is Xbox. Uh, Fable, Fable (laughs) is going to be the thing for that. I'm actually hoping that they put it out as a PC port too right away. Um, Because that's the only reason I had an Xbox was for Fable. Like hands down, I only had those systems because of the Fable games. Um, nice. but even like right now, like I, I have to explain to Bran a lot because he'll be the first one to be like, mommy, can you buy me this game? Or can you buy me this DLC? And he just got so used to me, like not really sacrificing, but I'd buy him the game first before I'd ever get it. 
that like I had to explain to him, like, dude, I don't always have the money to buy you this game. Like mm-hmm. I have to save for it. You just going to have to wait a little bit. Um, so that's just where I am at it. Like I, I have to save sometimes. I don't always get the games when they first come out. Sometimes I save in advance cause I know it's coming out. So like when Final Fantasy seven rebirth came out, I had that day one, I had the deluxe edition did not come with some fancy statue, Tino. All it came with was a steel <laughs> art book or a this steel time. book. And then an art this book time. that came with it. Um, but I'm, I'll never forgive you for that kingdom hearts flex because I wanted that shit. And I was like, I'm not going to get it. I'm not going to get it. And Gio was just like, Look where I, go. I was like, oh, fuck you. <laughs> See, and that's the thing. Like, I think I just come back from deployment then, too. So I had deployment money. So I put that on there. But it was the same thing. With I the, did uh, not. I was, ooh, Horizon, I was salty. The Horizon Forbidden West game, when that came out, I bought the, the cool collector's edition with that that came with one of the mammoths or whatever. So that sits right yeah, next and, to my TV. But, you know, I, I and, say. And there's nothing there's nothing wrong with that. I think, you know, to my point of like the people like in that group, for instance, but I know there's a lot of people like that. I'm not here to monitor anybody's pockets, right? Like, you know what I mean? If you got it, you don't got it. You're an adult. Like you figure that shit out. Right. Of course, yeah, it's my, up to you. My advice is, you know, be smart about it. But I think what irritates me about this group is whether or not they can afford it isn't the issue. Um, just because you can't afford something doesn't mean that it, it's not now acting as like active shrink in your house, you know, because mm-hmm. you're, you're fucking throwing away money. A lot of the times when they get in there and they buy games that they're going to get no value out of, they're like, I actually hate it. This one's going to the pile and you know, throw right. it behind them and they do it all the time. And it's like, Hey, like maybe stop doing that. <laughs> you know, like maybe, maybe pick something that, you know, really aligns with, you know, a styles that you like and maybe wait for a couple of reviews first um, and it's some actual gameplay to see if this is something that like you really want to do that you really want to invest in. Uh, and they like, they were just refused to do that. You know, they just get stuck into, um, I think that's what you were saying earlier, Jay, just in marketing or whatever. Mm-hmm. And, and you have to be careful, you know, I mean, even so from like a game dev perspective, specifically with unreal engine five it's so interesting to me because i'll see people come out with these like amazing trailers because it's not hard to make like a really beautiful scene that's just stunning but you can't really play games like that right like that unreal engine five is also used for like you know commercial use products you know where they make like demos of you know for like car commercials and shit like that like it can do some really intense stuff so you can make it look as real as you want it to look but that doesn't mean it's going to play like that Mm-hmm. In fact, most times it's not even going to be half as good as that. And um, there's a whole thing going around where people are like, oh, I've been catfished. And, you know, it's, it's kind of funny, but <laughs> it's like, well, that's the job, though, right? Is to sell you, um, right, exactly. you know, on, on this thing and, and secure the bag. I mean, afterwards, like they don't it didn't have to be exactly the same. They just needed to rope you in and people get roped in so easily. And like, I get it. Like the excitement is there. But I think as an adult gamer, as you get older, we just start to learn. Like I get tired of pissing away money on games that I don't like. So. I mean, I'll I'll buy maybe like five or six games a year that I try to space them out and I try to spend a lot of time doing research up you know, beforehand, um, unless it's like a series that I already know really well. So, for instance, like Final Fantasy, um, you know, Rebirth, like I played remake. I absolutely loved it. I played the original a million times. I knew that this is a thing that I was going to enjoy. So without hesitation. Yeah, I got it like day one. But like some of these new games coming out, you know, even fucking Pal World, I was like, let me let me look into this and wait a little bit. I'm not trying to just drop money. I don't know. Yeah. So that's 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 and at least with, with at least with, with Power World, you know, there's like that's not the full game, right? They were just like, hey, it's just it's early access, more will be coming once we get it figured out, I guess. But and, and I, f- I feel like that's that's more normal now. The the free to play model is definitely more used nowadays, like with multiplayer games and stuff like that well you know what i like and i think geo probably has a lot to back up on this but some of these indie games coming out and me now being an indie game developer um i guess you could say um i really enjoy them because they're just a breath of fresh air because their their purpose i mean are they making money sometimes they make crazy money but Mm -hmm. individually and that's the important part they're not trying to hike the price up to you know fucking as high as it can possibly go and, and try to justify their reasoning for doing it. Right. right. They're just, they're coming out with, you know, what they think is a fair value. Like stray, for instance, was made by a technically an indie studio, um, even though it's a fairly decent sized studio, but it ain't like Activision or something. You know what I mean? They're not mm-hmm. like massive, um, but like they made one of the best games I have ever played 30 bucks across whatever system you wanted 30 bucks. And that game was worth its weight in gold. It was so much better than most games that I purchased for $70. And like even, even Power World being this unfinished, 
you know, chaotic thing, like it was better than a lot of like other games. Like maybe it doesn't have like longevity. That's fine. That's okay. But like, it was fun. It was right. affordable um, in, in some aspects. Yeah. They obviously, you know, took things from Pokemon and a few other sources, but in other avenues, it was super creative, you know? Cause mm-hmm. like, we're like wh- for years, you know, we're just like, Hey guys, can we have something like this? And they're like, no, mm-mm, we're never breaking this mold. And Power was like, fuck it. We'll just make some weird clones of this and give you what you wanted. Like easy money. And it was, it was mm-hmm. easy money. And there's so many indie games that just like, you know, are not afraid to break the mold. And it's just, it, it feels like it's for like the passion of gaming to tell a story, to be creative. And I think that that's what a lot of the AAA titles lack these days man well i mean because you know it's it's big business i'm it's about me getting you these 70 dollars out of you and then after that you worried about the next game you know or the dlc which is just the the extra third that that game was missing look i don't even care about the (laughs) dlc you know it's like you might get it you might not because i know by the time the dlc drop you probably aren't even going to be playing the game anymore i might try to get the hooks back into you but if not don't worry about it. I got another seventy dollar game for you. Like this is this is 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 big business. Like it's not what it used to be. It's not mom and pop people that care about it. Want to have make sure everybody have a good time. I want it to look good, so you would buy it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you're absolutely right. But I, I think that that's what's happening in the industry right now. Is a lot of people, um, enough people, where it's making waves. See what I did there? Is switching. <laughs> <laughs> you know it's it's switching over towards like the indie games yeah you know because no, like, sure. because that's the like that heart that's in gaming which is a really difficult thing to describe but like if we th- if i if all of us think back to like sega uh super nintendo um definitely early playstation games all these games that came out that have been remade with a thousand different versions over the years this is the time when they were fresh they were mm-hmm. new and they had heart like just there was just something about them, like so many, so many games, you know, like the original Monster Rancher just had fucking soul to it. Or like Vanguard Bandits was one of the best RPGs. Monster Seed. Uh, I'm just like, you know, Banjo Kazooie, like they were just pumping shit out. I'm like, oh, it's a fucking bear with a bird and a book bag. I don't know, but it's lit. <laughs> it's just fun. You know, the uh, Goldeneye games, like a handful of those were just, you know, they were just they were cooking, bro. Like they were fucking cooking. How many times did we sit down? Even if you didn't like FPS, somebody at Golden Eye at a house party or something. Right. You we were locked in. Yeah. yeah. For 10 hours. Just like, all right, man, with the golden gun, let's go. And <laughs> it just there's just that spark isn't there in a lot of these games anymore. You know? Yeah. No, I, I, I definitely agree. And I mean, I feel like another reason the like you said, it's kind of trending back towards the indie like side of gaming is because the big budget gaming is not really sustainable anymore. It costs too much and not enough people are buying them out the gate for the $70 price tag that is just like, eh, let's kind of, let's dial it back a little bit. Like nah, prime bro, example, look at, look at Sony, you know, they said it themselves. It was just like, what we, what we've been doing is not working. Like this is, we're going to have to switch it up. So now no. they're trying to do the, the service games and stuff like that. But now they, you know, they we trying they pivoting pretty much. They are. Life is just too expensive for this shit right now. Like I just got grocery shopping, went grocery shopping before this. I walked out with a case of protein shakes, like basic Walmart Premier ones, um, and two not even completely full bags of groceries, and that shit was eighty nine dollars. Oh yeah, oh, I got yeah. like mouthwash, some hair conditioner some trail mix like i didn't get much bro and like in my mind i was like it's about to be like 50 bucks 89 i was like <laughs> i had the lady come over I was like can you make sure this didn't like she's like no you're good you're good and i was like hmm. matter of fact you what didn't time to be alive yeah uh, kind of yeah it was one of those situations she was like i can see the error of your ways um you know so in a world like this like we you got to be more strategic you know when you're when you're buying this shit you know we can't just be throwing 70 dollars because w- when you're doing this all the time for games that suck and being irresponsible, you're letting them know like it's okay. You know what I mean? If they're yeah. hitting sales, like we're, we're, I'm gonna fucking do it again, and I'm like, right, right, not and, this time. And see, and just to make you I'll mad because how again. much you how much you <laughs> love Xbox, that's when Game Pass been coming through for me for the last I say year and some change. I've been locked into Game Pass. Well, but that's it, the thing. It's... Game Pass isn't that bad, but Game Pass can also be used on the PC, which is what makes it like really good for what it is and what it's doing. But just straight up Xbox, like. I'd much rather have Game Pass on my PC than have an Xbox. 
I'm well, so honest. I have, I have, I have it. I'm using it for my PC, but I'm able to use it for the console as well. Yeah, so if if Monica's trying to play something, Dahlia loves her Paw Patrol game on there. You know what I mean? And it's just like, so for me, that's just what I've been at. Like I, I pay my 18 bucks a month. And is I mean, there's hundreds of games to pick from. It's indie games, stuff that I probably wouldn't have played without it, like just to get my eyes on it. And I, I'm like, I really like it. Like Vampire Survivor, that was a, a big indie game uh, a little bit ago. I would not, I know for a fact that I wouldn't have bought it just because I'm like, yeah, it's only a couple bucks, but I, I wouldn't a, have bought it. I, I it's just a wouldn't. Smart move. Be, I mean, because Sony has like a version too, um, you know, of that, or I should say as well. And it just made a lot of sense to me because they basically copied and pasted the formula that used to work with Sega Channel, which was exactly you man. Know, you spent X amount of dollars, and you know there were just so many things that you know. Again, to your point, that you probably would have never tried, but now you can. You know, and and old games like okay, just because it's old doesn't mean it still can't be good. And like somebody like you, and and and, and probably G as well. Granted, like that boy becoming a little teenager soon, so he's gonna be like, I gotta have the best. You know, they get a little bougie, <laughs> but. But the age that, that Dahlia's at right now, I mean, you know, she can put on something that came out in 06 and she'd be like, let's go, you know? Right, and like, yeah. And that's, and that's a beautiful thing while you are getting away with that. <laughs> <laughs> hey, boy, <laughs> that I'm will change. You, she gonna, she she's going to She's going to be like, Dad, I'm on Texas. Fortnite now and I need the no, latest see, packs that are Brandon coming. Brandon's playing stuff on Roblox still and Roblox looks like trash in comparison to I love games. Roblox. That's, really? That's tripping. good, but it just it doesn't look as good as like new age games. So that's why I'm just saying if if she becomes a Roblox kid, you know that you'll be able to get away with any kind of retro games with her. There, like, yeah. Excellent. Roblox is fan. You should try to get her into it. Roblox is the shit, bro. You can play it on like anything. It's great for I, you know. I did the step kid thing for a while. It's great for like parents and the and the kids to like do it. It's low. Well, it's usually low cost, but them damn robux. They oh, can they sneak up. Ro- the robux is, they sneak up on you. Yeah, they're like, oh damn, bro, it's gonna be a lot of grinding unless you spend twenty five dollars worth of robux. I'm like. <laughs> You know what I mean? And it's like, yeah. you know, am I a good dad if I spend it or am I a bad dad if I don't? You know, <laughs> no, thankfully, man, you got to show them that they got to work for it. That's what no, the grind is for, son. I, I got something for that, guys. I got something for that. You're not about to flex on me. I know <laughs> I got rich dad, poor dad. I know I know what I'm doing and when I'm doing it. I also got on audio books. So when I when I do cardio, I, I listen to it a second time. These kids it's not going to get me when I get back in the daddy driver's seat. You did, it kind of hurt when you said it, but <laughs> yeah. I think we're at the end of the podcast. Uh, this is a oh. pretty good time right. to cry to, to get off the air. <laughs> Shit, you like kids, motherfucker. <laughs> right, you say you got something new. All right, I said I, everything. I, I'm preparing for the what ifs. Okay, there you go. The what ifs I hate that you guys so fucking as, much. Uh, just as possible as Spider Man coming through your window. That what if? Okay, so it's probably not happening, but. Have I told you about the motion of the ocean? Because I'm a surfer now. Oh my god! <laughs> I got to give back the heart to. Uh, let me stop. Now I can't make the Moana, Moana reference. The heart of the ocean. <laughs> yeah, it was the heart. The of, heart uh, of Tefiti. So it's, it's, with the T, yeah, Tefiti. Tefiti. Yeah. Was it Tefiti? Yes. Let me just make sure I got it. I think that's right. Look, he. he I like, watched that movie right so many times. Yep, Tefiti. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. It was like on the tip of my tongue. That's such a good movie. I loved it. Almost as much as Lilo and Stitch, which is another surfing movie. And like, I always felt like, you know, I'm just trying to find my, you know what I mean? Ohana? Yeah. Okay. I'll feel it. You just said it. Not me, man. <laughs> you said it, man. Oh, it's my heart. Yeah, yeah man. Let Jumping me out you. my chest. It gets oh, bad, right. man. Well, you got those cats. I- that counts. Cats they, don't even like water, and that's like the problem, you know. Some like, cats like just, water. You just got to get them early. Yeah, we're oil and water. It's different, you know. Like we it's just, different. we just don't, we don't mix, you know. Okay. Sometimes you just gotta paddle out and <laughs> stop. <laughs> it's gonna be so bad when I start. I'm probably gonna buy a Telecaster too because it's got a real like jazzy surfer California sound, you know. And, and so wise. now, now. Are you gonna like dye your hair? Are you gonna put some blonde in it? Like you got at least like gonna have those those tip, fucking... a streak. You got to do something. Oh, they call them frosted no, tips. but I yeah. might get like a tribal like fake Samoan tattoo. Like you know what I mean? Because people are gonna wonder, and I think that that will be all the answers they need. I'm this would be the perfect time to just like right in my titty. The, Look, mom, you, it's Aquaman, br- brother. You just right, right. on the top of me right now. Is that a great value, Dwayne Johnson out there? What the <laughs> fuck is going on? He has hair though. 
Right? He's, I got the people's knee. I'm done. The people's It's knee. different. It's not the elbow. <laughs> and it's going to give out at any time. Oh, man. Do you bold of you to assume that his elbows are good? There's a reason he doesn't wrestle very often anymore. Well, he just elbows people in movies constantly. He does that a lot. He's a one trick pony. I actually grew up to not like him that much. I was like, I love this man, and then I was like, actually, he was like, you kind of, you kind of suck, bro. Yeah, you're not, you're not as cool as I thought you were. But anyways, yeah, I just want to jerk. He's yeah, but that's probably an understatement. But yeah, look, what after you, after you weigh. You know, once you get past 250, 260, you become an asshole. Isn't that right, Tino? How much you weigh? Oh, <laughs> I was at 275, but I'm Maybe. back down under 235. So like, I'm at 235 right now after cutting. So I'm at I'm at um, 147. I hope that makes you feel okay. <laughs> like, I don't know. I was aren't at 168. Like, are you like 411 though? I'm 5'4", but okay. My mom's 4'11". How much, how much you weigh when you beat me up, Gia? Uh, I was like one... She was leaner. One, Yeah, I was one... I was the weight I am now. Okay. So like 145, 147. I don't know why you decided to do that with her, why you wanted to square up. <laughs> I didn't we know. We need a whole I... podcast it's about every, that. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have the picture up. with Jay Ice in his fucking eye afterwards. <laughs> That will be the cover of the episode, and we'll all talk about what happened all the way back in 2020, Get right before COVID of, hit. Of Some Tino say COVID going, hit because Gia attacks Jay. All right, it was, a, it was the butterfly. A video effect. of Tino going, he's gonna morph out of that anytime now. <laughs> you could, you could do it, Jay. Got I'm Monica like, I, in the I background. Cannot. She was hyping you up too. It was definitely a weird time. Like, and like, I don't know why. Like, I picked Gia from the airport. We got some food, and she was like, "I want to wrestle." I was like, "I don't want to." And she like jumped on me like a spider monkey and did like a chokehold. And I was like, "Look." I'm not going to get out of this because you are very well trained. I was like, but I am strong enough to just lay on the floor to stop giving off energy, holding your ass up and me. I'm like, we're just going to sit here until you decide that you don't want to. And it took a while. She was just like, "Mm, (laughs) I think you'll give up. And like, I think like maybe five to six minutes went by and I let up a little bit just to see if she's like, going to let me go. And she fucking went in tighter like a goddamn boa constrictor. (laughs) And I was like, bitch. You know what? Uh, we will sit here all fucking night if that's what we're going to do. I got stamina. I may not be able to get out of this, but you're not going to black me out. And then Jay was like, Jay saw that. Jay saw me struggling and was like, I can take her. I, I think it's my time. I can, I can do that. Hold my I, I thought you burned the arms out. You didn't even do that for me. I just man. don't even remember I I, the fact that I, you I guys to... were like, Gia, you tricked him too. Like after you whipped his ass, you were like, let's stretch now. And then you wrapped him up again. And I was like, oh, <laughs> Jesus. I felt responsible because it was my house. And I'm like, you guys got to take this to the streets. Like, I don't know <laughs> you're, why. You're get out. You know what I mean? Like, I don't have insurance for situations like these. Like, I don't, you know. It's not yeah, covered it's under bad, homeowner's man. insurance. Jay had fucking frozen peas or whatever on his face afterwards. Like, it was yeah, weird. It definitely was a bag of frozen peas. Like, I'm like, Gia, unbelievable. Like, Gia broke my, like, beard trimmer, like, I did. that <laughs> night. <laughs> I had to go to get one the next day. I was like, it's it's totally fine. Great. I didn't even like that beard trimmer. I felt really bad. <laughs> Fucking love that beard trimmer. Every day that I, I shave and it pulls a couple, two extra hairs or doesn't quite, you know, get me just right. I'm like, old reliable would have never did it, but Gia <laughs> made sure that he wasn't going to make it through. You finish it off like fucking ace in one piece for no reason. <laughs> it's unjust. Just fucking put a hole in something I loved. <laughs> fucking monster. Yeah. Yeah, sit with that. <laughs> right. You see, you let that stew. Yeah, we just had some drinks and she was like, I'm a different person with this kind of alcohol. I was just like, oh, like, do you like to play trivia games? Or she was like, I like to fight. <laughs> Bitch, go, go find problems outside. We're your friends. She was like, mm-mm. Right. She said, no, them the best fights. There's some problems in here that we have to talk about. <laughs> another episode then another i know people are gonna if they listen to it they'll be like what in the hell Do we'll have an episode dedicated to it yeah it's just for no reason i've been practicing ufc to fight my friends more when i'm less tired that's what i should have did is fucking pill cosby your ass and be like just fucking sleep over there sleep it off <laughs> pill cosby wow yeah pill cosby oh, as the first celebrity i thought of but as i said i was like nah that guy he was it wasn't to go to sleep that dude was wild the Never mind. I'm anyway, not going to touch it. I'm not going to anyway. touch it. Yeah. <laughs> and we won't have to. All right. So we're getting out of here. Thank you guys so much. Um, I'm going to go ahead and hit end on the podcast. Uh, Bye. Bye. Meow. Ciao. I'm fancy. Your bloodline is weak.
It looks like it's still going. Oh, it is. I just wanted to add in that Jay's family's bloodline oh. probably won't survive the next winter with that kind of attitude. Oh, Jesus. Hey, it's going. Okay, goodbye. Hey, it's going to survive. Bye.